Hey, everybody, how you doing? Uh, hey, listen up, I got a big announcement. Me and my friend Lexi Schlimmer of Hess Van Schlimmer Metalworks have recently teamed up for uh, this year on November 24th, Riffs for Gifts. Uh, this will be a Toys for Tots charity rock show over at Pops in Sauge, Illinois. And it will feature Outrun the Fall, The Poor, Steeples, Monk and the People, The Matching Shoe, and Silent Hollow. Uh, this will be a $10 donation at the door or a $5 donation with a toy donation also. So uh, we're going to try to raise a bunch of money and a bunch of toys for the kids, for the neighborhood, do a little good for the neighborhood. And uh, I've heard a little rumor maybe that Santa Claus might be there. So that's really exciting. Uh, can't wait to see you all out there again. November 24th. Risks for Gifts over at Pops. Uh, more details will be coming soon. But do not miss this show. Biggest biggest thing I've been a part of yet. And I'm so excited to see everybody. And uh, we're going to be a great night for a great cause. See you all very soon. Thanks, everybody. Hi, this is Lexi Sid. of Hess Van Schlemmer Metalworks and Art. Home of the Schlemmer Metal Wolves. We are a small but furious family-run welding, fabrication, and metal works shop with CNC capabilities and now full-scale powder coating operation. We bring unique, affordable quality art to life within the realm of practicality. Whether it's signs, sculptures, railings, shelves, furniture, or even just powder coat for your rims or your patio set, give us a look. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram or call 618-670-5724. We are Hess Van Schlemmer Metal Works. That was terrible. Allie tried. Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here. Let me tell you about my friends over at Naked Vine, located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri, serving up all kinds of delicious wine, whiskey, and local craft beers. Hey, swing by and visit them Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, they do live music a lot on the weekends. Uh, this coming up Thursday, October 18th, Phil and Carson from the Scandaleros. Friday, October 19th, Pat Liston. And Saturday, October 20th, the Bedlam Brothers. And uh, I will be uh, back out at Naked Vine on November 13th for my next uh, Rock Paper Podcast singer-songwriter storytelling showcase with Maddie Shell, Nick Gussman, and Sean Kimball. So don't miss that show. You can find all this at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along with them also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is Matt the Rattlesnake Lesh, and you're listening to the Rock Paper Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with Matt Rattlesnake Lesh. Well, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me on. I uh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, man. I, we uh, we've t- we've become buddies over the last couple years or so. Uh, been following you around and uh, getting to see you play and. And I kept uh, kept saying, "Hey, man, we should do one of these." And uh, the time is now. We uh, we got a yeah. we got the big record coming out. We got a big release party and all kinds of things happening. So um, this is uh, I felt this was a good time to get to know a little bit more about what Rattlesnake's been up to. So so <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks for thanks for coming out and doing the show today, man. This is uh, exciting stuff. Oh yeah, well thanks for having me. It's it's been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> we. Uh, well, let's, uh, like I said, uh, this is our first really get to tr- chat. Most of the time I see you is at the, the you know, bars playing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, But uh, you care to uh, tell me a little bit more? Like, uh, I guess, uh, do we, do we grow, up in, grow up here in St. Louis, I guess? Uh, yeah. yeah. I actually uh, grew up uh, in High Ridge. Yeah. And uh, really, I've lived here my whole life, really. And, 
you know, I've, I've been in St. Louis uh, quite a while. I have family all over St. Louis, the St. Louis area, and everything, yeah. and some in Illinois, but mainly I've uh, been here in High Ridge, St. Louis area. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, and then, I, so when did you grab the guitar for the first time? Pretty early on. Yeah, when I was 11 years old. Yeah. Yeah, man, I just turned 21, so I've been playing for 10 years now. Yeah. Kind of hard to believe. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy to think about. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It really is. Uh, you uh, was it was it like a, a, fam- a family thing that like you guys uh, you have other people play in the family, or was it just something that you found discovered on your own? Well, I mean, a little bit of that what you just said but like the family it kind of ran in the family a little bit my dad's brother played he played mostly like acoustic uh, type of stuff and uh, my grandpa also played a little bit but nothing you know like real major Mm -hmm. and I guess really when I uh, first really got into music well really I've always been into music ever since I was ever since I can remember really and um I remember when I was 10, my dad got me Guitar Hero for Christmas. Yeah. And that's really got what got me into music a lot more. And then I he got me a guitar for my 11th birthday. And that's when it all took off. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Well, was it always, and it was always blues? Or uh, or did you try playing some, because a uh, rock band, I mean, you obviously got the rock. You got a lot of different stuff on there and things. Oh, yeah. But uh, you, uh, you get into other stuff, too? Is it always pretty much blues um when i first started playing i played a lot of hard rock actually that was uh what i loved the most and uh like guns and roses you know a lot of that type of stuff and um yeah i i started playing a lot of that then my dad showed me who uh, Jimi hendrix was and steve ray vaughn and right that's what turned me on to more of the blues sound and stuff and Mm -hmm. i started looking at their influences and Know, went all the way back to the the beginning of the blues, the birth of the blues, all those very first guys like you know like Blind Lemon, Jefferson, and Charlie Patton, all those guys. Yeah, that, uh, that's how a lot of how I discovered a lot of music that I love is just like kind of going going backwards with it. You know, you like yeah. you like Led Zeppelin. Well, you Led Zeppelin you know was heavily influenced by all these guys and stuff yeah. like that, and so. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. You just discover it all backwards. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You uh um. So we uh we when do you, I guess when do you decide that I'm gonna take this and and you know put a show together and play out for somebody when 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 do you make that move from deciding when to take the stage and play? Well, um, I took lessons. Well, mainly I taught myself first, and then my dad put me in lessons to kind of, I guess, learn more formally, I guess you would say. But um, when I when I took lessons, uh, they didn't, I mean, I, I didn't really learn a, a whole lot. I learned, I learned a lot of stuff, but nothing that I kind of, you know, like taught myself, I guess. And when I was going through lessons, this place that I used to go through, they, they would always uh, do put these little combos together of students, and they would, they would rehearse for like two months or so, then they would play, and that's really was my first experience of playing. We played at the Jillies uh, in High Ridge right up the street, and um, yeah, that was, we were playing for like parents and stuff mm-hmm. and the teachers and I remember the I'll, I'll never forget it. the first song I played was "Running Down a Dream" by Tom Petty. There you go. And uh, yeah, that was my uh, one of my favorite songs. Yeah. And it was a great experience. Yeah, R.I.P. Man, that, yeah, one of the I one know. of the greats, man. I, I love know. Tom Petty. It is a shame. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> so that was the very first gig, uh, Chili's, huh? Chili's. Yeah. Yep. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess you you just kind of get hooked on it then. I was like, yeah. I got to keep doing this. So. Yeah, I mean, after performing, that I love the just you know the adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush when you get from playing and you know when you're on stage. I I just love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, you uh, like I said, we got the record and um, yep. quite a bit of these uh, on here are originals. So when mm-hmm. do you when do you start uh, 
wanting to write your own stuff. When um, I guess it was around that same time, uh, you start yeah. start taking uh, the pen to paper and yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the songs on there, I'm not gonna say which one, but uh, it's it was the very first thing I've ever wrote in my life, and I think I wrote that when I was 13 years old. 13 or 14. Yeah. And yeah, it was the, one of the very first things I ever wrote in my life. And we're just now finally getting to record it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I've always uh, kind of been writing, even if it isn't, you know, lyrics. Every, you know, when, I, when I'm sitting at the house and I'm just, you know, uh, messing around with the acoustic or something, uh, and I come across something that I like, I... I'll always, you know, go back and record it on my phone. So I have a lot of recordings on yeah. my phone of just, you know, just little licks here and there. You're right. That could possibly be songs. Yeah, man. But, yeah. Well, very cool. We, uh, like I said, we do have this record. Uh, we have a big release party set for October 20th over at uh, Highway 61 Roadhouse and Kitchen. Yep. Um, that's uh, Webster Groves, right? Yeah, Webster yeah. Groves. Yeah. Um, and this will be uh, just an evening with uh, Matt Lush and uh, the band and everything. So we got uh, no cover, 7.30 show starts, and you can come on out there and pick up a copy of the brand new debut album. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, will have physical copies available, and I'm guessing uh, soon after will be uh, on all the digital platforms and all that? Yep. Soon, if, if not, we're hoping to get it, you know. Within a week of the show, right? They yeah, have it all on those digital platforms and stuff, so you can stream it. And, yeah, yeah, man. We uh, you <clears throat> well, let's uh, let's give them a little sneak peek of what you've been up to. Uh, you said you wanted to share a song, you uh, cross cut saw. This mm -hmm. is uh, Pierce's track two on the record, and uh, this is a uh, uh, Albert King. You said Albert King. Yeah, yeah. it's an Albert King cover. Yep. <laughs> Cut so drag me across your low. Well, I'm a cross cut so drag me across your low. I'll put you up so easy for you. You can't help but say I don't. Some call me wood chopping Sam, some call me wood cutting Ben. The last girl I cut the wood for, she won me back again. I'm a cross cut so drag me across your low. I'll cut you up so easy for you. You can't help but say I don't. Cuts good. I'm a cross cut so bear me in your wood. I'm a cross cut so drag me across your log. I'll cut you up so easy for you. You can't help but say I don't.
uh, I guess he was another pretty big influence uh, oh, uh, yeah. on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Three Kings. That's right, The Three yeah. Kings. Yeah. I loved Albert King. He really, uh, the first time, I, I think, yeah, as far as I can remember, one of the first times I have I heard Albert King was that In Sessions tape he did with Stevie Ray Vaughan. And uh, through that, I found out about Gus Thornton. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, I'll never forget the first night I met Gus because I was just shocked to believe that that was him on that recording. Yeah, but he's the <laughs> he's one of the coolest man. I, lo- I love that guy. He uh, I've talked about trying to do something with him. We we need to work it out and mm-hmm. get him on the show. But uh, yeah, Gus is Gus is the man. He's one of the yeah. one of the coolest players in town. He is. Yeah. Uh, you uh you've got to you got to hang with quite a few uh. People, I was telling you a little bit, a little off mic. We uh, one of those stories, but uh, I've seen since you know. I don't think at the time I really I realized who you were and things, but now that we've become friends and and stuff, um, I remember uh, I've seen your picture where you met uh, Gary Clark Jr. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was there, I was telling you I was there that yeah. night as well, mm-hmm. and uh, and he's another one of the guys that's just like the coolest. Like I uh, I remember having a you know hanging out there for a minute with him outside and uh and he uh some some girl like walked up and like with her phone and she's like hey will you say hi to my sister or something like that and like and he's like hey what's up this is gary clark jr and like and i was just like it was just uh you know it was a fun moment just to kind of have that share that with him and you know get to realize that he's like super down to earth and Mm -hmm. you know just a really a great guy and yeah but he like he signed like everything for everybody and whatever anybody that hung out there and stuff and then i remember uh remember seeing you and you you bring up the uh guitar and stuff yeah. and, um yeah. i was like yeah who's this little kid you know this guitar and stuff but, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah that was me yeah man. It, it faded off now yeah but um uh, i'm hoping sometime in the future i'm gonna catch him again and have him sign it again yeah this time i'm gonna make sure you know we're gonna like put something over it and make sure it doesn't fade away <laughs> yeah what was uh, what, gar- what guitar was it? The- it was my uh, Epiphone E335. Yeah. My uh, red dot. This is the one I play the most. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's kind of acting up on me now. I have to get it some work done on it, but yeah. it's been <laughs> through some pretty tough spots. Is Gary the only one to, to sign it, or do you get some other guys to sign it to? And uh, he's the only one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, he's. I, I love what he's doing. Like I, I remember uh, when I first. I uh, got to hear his uh, the EP and all that, um, and just uh, mm-hmm. I was just like, "What is this?" I was like, "I, yeah. I love the sound and like you know what he was doing." And mm-hmm. um, so, and I, yeah, his 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 sounds definitely evolved. Oh. You know, there's uh, some more R and B sides and yeah. stuff that he does and different things. But um, I, I love that it was the sound of that first EP, that kind of like hard rock and blues yeah. kind of sound and stuff. And yeah, I know I I love what he does. I like. Uh, that black and blue album yeah. he put out. Um, some of this it's so crazy because you go to one song and it's like this, you know, like like you just said, like roll rock and blues. Then you go to another, it's like this this different like fusion R and B hip hop type of type of song. And it's just it's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like that a lot about your record as well. Like I mean, there there are uh, there's a lot of different things going on. Um, You you know, like you've got uh, you've got uh, some like you know kind of the harder rock kind of things. Like you're saying, you got some that are just like straight gritty, you know, down blues and stuff. And then you got uh, one that's almost almost kind of a kind of dancey. Like uh, you you, uh, what's uh, uh, it's uh, I forget the name now. Hold on. uh, in the rain. In the rain. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. So it's like kind yeah. of a, almost like a dance song, you know. But it's yeah. like you get a little bit of everything coming out of there, and like, and that's yeah. what I love about a, a good record, man. Like uh-huh. where you can you get a lot of different sounds and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something that uh, I dedicated myself to. I said that whenever I would make an album, that I wanted to do, uh, basically songs that. Uh, not just one genre of songs, mm-hmm. you know. I want to try to expand as much as possible, because you know, I play all types of music. I play blues, jazz, rock, um, country, R and B, yeah. all different types. Yeah. But blues is definitely a primary uh, genre I play, of course. Yeah. But you know, I love all music. You uh, you recorded this all with uh, 
Paul, right? Is that correct? Yeah, Paul uh, Nias. Uh, Blue Lotus Studios? Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that, uh, you had Rogue Time doing that? Oh, yeah, I had a blast. He, Paul's the man. He, yeah. he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I've been down there quite a few times for did a couple podcasts down there in, mm-hmm. in, uh, in the studio and and uh, yeah it's just it's always a great yeah. feeling down there just be you know it's really uh, you know calming and just a, a real laid back mm-hmm. uh, down there and just like Paul is himself like he's just a real mm-hmm. real uh, you know easygoing guy really fun yeah. to be around and stuff and one of the yeah. one of the best though yeah yeah he's yeah I don't know his studio is is great he has so so much uh cool stuff down there yeah so yeah check out uh blue lotus recording studio here right here in st louis doing a lot yeah. of really great things i mean i know he's worked with like i said working with yourself and then he's but he's uh uh you know he's the roland johnson record is incredible gene jackson's record oh, yeah. i mean a lot of really great records coming out of that studio this uh past couple of years so yep mm-hmm. get involved um, oh yeah what's what's uh what's like the biggest thing you think uh you know what's recording with Paul like how he uh, changed it, any particular track or anything like that like how he what what's the what is the like the biggest thing you think he helped like push to, to make this record and stuff well I'm glad you asked that actually because the thing with Paul since he's a musician too um not all not all recording engineers are musicians you know some of them you know, might know a thing or two, but Paul's an actual, you know, honest to God musician. Oh, yeah. He can play anything. And um, there's been a couple instances when we were in the studio, we were recording some, and uh, you know, he would cut the track and come out and say, like, "Hey, something's not sounding right. Why don't you, why don't you try doing this over this part or something, or uh, try cut cutting something different with a different sound?" And most of the time, it worked. You know, and really, most of the time. Uh, of us, me and Paul collaborating came in the mixing part because when we were doing the tracking everything went really smoothly I was actually surprised how everything went so smoothly and um, yeah, when the mixing process came uh, we really shared ideas and you know, just made the album the best that we can make it with our budget and everything so mm-hmm. I'm glad that I worked with him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's like I said, one of the best for sure. Oh, yeah. Um you uh well, let's uh let's give him another one. You uh you said uh you wanted to also share uh which one we uh I still got my blues. Oh yeah, I still got my blues, yeah. You said that you love me.
said you love him too You know I ain't no doctor, baby But I sure know what to do I cried, please, baby Which is one of my favorites from the record which i like as soon as i heard that because i love this like just real you know down like real true blues you know it's like uh and that's kind of what like mm-hmm. almost kind of um not, uh just uh reminded me like uh uh some of like Z- the zz tops got that song called uh mm-hmm. blue jean blues and, yeah. stuff, and it kind of reminded me of that just like just uh, you know, like well, that one. That song's pretty silly because he's like got the, got the blues about his blue jeans. But uh, yeah. it's, uh, but it's it's still uh, just a great example about like that. Just say like, that true down blues like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, uh, but anyway, you, what uh, this is an original song you wrote and stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, it, how did this uh, song come to be? Um. Well, really, um, it's funny because one day I was just um, watching watching TV. Uh, at my house and I had my acoustic you know I was just messing around and I was I was kind of halfway watching TV halfway not you know and because we were still in the middle of writing songs for the CD so I thought that hey I need a I need like a slow slow minor blues that I need to put on this album so I was thinking of something like something to write about and uh I eventually just came to the fact that, you know, I'm just going to write about a girl, <laughs> you know. And um, and I was just sitting there trying to come up with, like, a hook, you know, something that would really catch your attention. And so I, it just popped in my head the first line, like, just like a, like a real big hit at the beginning. Then you said that you loved me. I think it was it was pretty catchy. Yeah. Especially when we started rehearsing it with the full band and everything came together. Yeah, man. Right, yeah. There's so many of those uh, uh, good songs, are all, either about falling in love or falling out of love. So, yeah. like, uh, yeah. there's uh but yeah, I, I, I uh, it was something I connected to with, like, again, just that, is that we've all kind of been there. We've all, yeah. we've all had those heartbreak blues like that. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but, uh, 
yeah, man, another uh, it's a great song. I, like I said, this whole record's really, really well done. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, you, you, like I said, we mentioned the, there is a uh, that crosscut saw cover, but there's a few other covers in here too. Uh, so it's nice to see kind of a you paying uh, homage to some of your uh, some of the heroes that kind of helped inspire uh, all yeah. this too. So yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what nine? You said nine originals. Yeah, nine originals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So which is uh, it was cool for me, like you know, as a debut and everything that you you. I mean, obviously you were saying it's been quite a while in the making, but like to have this a big full length record like this mm-hmm. as your debut and stuff. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are kind of going with the EPs and yeah. and uh, different things, but uh, it was cool to see uh, you putting like uh, thirteen songs on here now yeah. and for for the debut and stuff. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. And yeah. I, I did. Uh, I do. I think the first uh, recording I heard from you was Rattling, well, which mm-hmm. appeared on the um, yeah s- seventeen and seventeen. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Compilation. Yeah, Paul recorded that too. As yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that which it was. I mean, that's cool to be like. Those yeah. are such great compilations. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You get a little nice glimpse of the whole city. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, like that. Like it's a uh, and. And, uh, but yeah, between Paul and uh, Jeremy Siegel Moss, uh-huh. like I mean, those yeah. guys are uh, both doing great things uh, uh-huh. with those with the Blue Society and everything. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I know. I mean, when I uh, sat down to listen to that seventeen seventeen CD, um, it exceeded my expectations, really, honestly. And I was sitting there, I was just you know going track by track. But I will have to say, the track I liked the most is uh scars by brother jefferson band yeah man i mean it, it came right before my songs so i was like oh my god i can't follow this <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it, it was just great i mean his voice on that song is yeah. something else than the saxophones and yeah great i love that um uh, i think it's on that 17 17 uh the the manis brothers uh song um uh, is, is that on there uh uh Think so, or was that on the sixteen? Maybe a sixteen. I forget. They're all good. Yeah, but they are. <laughs> yeah. Really, I you forget. lose track. I think it, so many I think it might be on sixteen. Now you saying that, so yeah. But uh, I love those guys too. What they do, their their oh, yeah. their style of a uh, uh-huh. hill country blues and stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> like I said, we got this big party coming up on the twentieth uh, over at Webster, uh, Webster Groves at uh, Highway sixty one. Roadhouse, um, you uh, and you, uh, you're playing all night. Like I said, seven thirty to eleven, and yep. gonna play a lot of uh, a lot of music. I'm guessing you're gonna play through the whole record that night too. Or? Yeah, yeah. The first set, uh, we're just gonna play straight through the, the CD, uh, track one to track thirteen, and uh, you know where I'm gonna, you know, give a little bit of information about uh, like some of the original songs and. Like how they were made and the mm-hmm. inspiration for them and stuff and yeah i'm hoping people will like it when they come out yeah but yeah what's um what what's going to be next do you think for uh for you and the band do you, you guys uh now that we got this record ready to go i mean is there do you want to kind of get out there and tour a little bit to see how people respond to it or yeah no that's the plan you know whenever this thing uh drops we're gonna send it to uh, uh, some you know different places around uh, different states and stuff and try to get some uh, gigs booked at some different festivals and, and I have some connection in Mississippi and stuff I'm gonna try to get booked down there as well and I'm already I'm working on the next CD already actually yeah so we're I'm doing that and yeah life's busy but it's been great <laughs> Yeah. You, uh, I, I just imagine. I mean, I talk a lot about it on here, but I just imagine that's the the you know that's the dream, right? You know, jump in the van with the with the yeah. band and, uh, yeah. and and see where it goes, man. Let yeah. the music, let the music take you around the world. And yeah, yeah. There's nothing else I would I really want to do. Yeah. Other than play music. You know? Right. You, uh, you got any plans to make a, any videos or anything with this? Uh, you know, we were thinking about it, but. Uh, the the CD and everything was pretty expensive sure. plus with the shirts so it's definitely something in the making we're mm-hmm. going to do it eventually but we're not sure when you know yeah so. I just like it seems to be um, one of the biggest things you know like everything's out we everything now is like 
has to have the visual to go with the music, yeah. you know. It's like, yeah. it, I don't know when that all really, like, but, but you know, you can't even up, like, you can't upload a song just to Facebook or something. You have to have a video to go with it or yeah, of some sort or picture at least. And, yeah. And, uh, but, I mean, I think, like, YouTube, like, that's where everybody goes, obviously, for, for all these videos and stuff now and things. But it's like, but that, I think the, a great music video especially as you're looking to tour like people want to see what you look like and what you sound yeah. like and everything so yeah mm -hmm. it's a good uh, way to start getting getting yourself booked and around around the country and stuff so. oh yeah yeah like yeah like i said it's definitely something that uh we've been given a lot of attention to but mm -hmm. we're trying to find you know hopefully sometime you maybe early next year we'll start developing it mm -hmm. right well we'll see what what happens yeah very cool uh well i'm excited for you man i'm excited to see uh so you get out there and do this thing because like oh, yeah. uh it's uh it's just i'm i'm real uh real proud of you and and, and really you love this record and stuff so i'm excited Thank to you. everybody else get a hold of it and get to listen and uh and discover some more st louis blues out here man yeah because we got we got a lot of really great things in st louis blues right yeah, now we do we really do you uh what you've done um you've done a couple of those uh Big Muddies, right? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Do you play last this year's? Yeah, I, I played um, actually last year and this year's. Yeah. Uh, I played both at Big Daddy's. Yeah. Uh, last year, I believe I was, um, I think I was towards the beginning. Uh, this year, I ended up headlining bed, uh, the Big Daddy stage. Yeah. That was fun. That yeah. was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Hope to get it. Uh, hope to you know do it again next year. There, uh, those, it's always one of my favorite weekends, and uh, but unfortunately this year I wasn't able to make it out there. But uh, it's um, it's it's always a, always such a great time, and like getting to see the city, you come out and support, and like uh, you know, especially an, an all St. Louis festival, you know, like is mm -hmm. you know so many greats, so many of my favorites, and That's right. um, but yeah, those those uh, lineups are crazy, man. You look yeah. around, there's so much talent, and I know, yeah, is that uh, you uh. I've I've seen you like you know like again with some of the pictures online and stuff. You've got to obviously become buddies with a lot of these guys. Uh, you mentioned uh -huh. Gus, and I've seen yeah. I, uh, I saw a picture with you and uh, Big Mike and Rich McDonough and stuff oh, yeah. like from years ago and things. Oh, and yeah. um, so imagine like hanging with those guys and getting to kind of share some of these stages and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I mean that's better than any any college class or any any <laughs> yeah. anything that you're learning from mm -hmm. these some of the greats. That's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, since, you know, I go to Webster, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm studying jazz performance. Right. And uh, it's funny because every Monday we have master class there, and our combos play normally every other Monday. And, you know, the a lot of the jazz professors there, they'll cr critique us what we did good, what we did bad, what we need to work on, you know, such and such. But, um... Yeah, I think what you just said uh, goes directly into that because yeah. really playing live or even open uh, jam sessions, actually getting there, doing it, applying the things you learn mm -hmm. is better than any master class you could ever go to, really. Right. You know, because you're experiencing, experiencing it, you know, at the same time you're, uh, you're playing it. You know, so you'll be up there you know, you might you might think you're playing it right, but then the band um, does something completely different. You have to adjust to it. It's like, oh, I have to fix that. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's great. Yeah. Well, I think um, one of the last times I saw you was uh, you guys came and played at uh, Broadway Oyster Bar. Yeah. And I was uh, working down there that night, and <clears throat> I'm watching the show, and I uh, I remember saying to you guys. Um, I kept hearing these like horn lines, and I'm, and I'm like, where, where, is that, where is that coming from? And then I realized your uh, your drummer plays uh, like he's got a keyboard with a uh, with some horns on it and uh -huh. things, and like um, that's the first time I'd ever seen that. Like that was uh, really, yeah. really, really uh, incredible, and like it sounded awesome. Like that's the thing. Uh -huh. Like it wasn't like, uh, but it was just uh, took me by surprise. I'm like, where is that coming from? And then I... <laughs> it's funny because. Uh, I, I I do that sometimes now. Ever since you said that, I look in the audience and I see. Sometimes I see people like looking around yeah. whenever he's doing that. But yeah, it's it's crazy. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Really. I mean, he sets it on the floor, Tom, and 
he's you know he's playing drums with his left hand, and he's <laughs> doing these horn sounds over here. And sometimes they're like you know they they're not on the same beat, so so sometimes they're really anticipated or real syncopated and everything. And you know you just have it's like a almost like a right brain left brain yeah. type of thing going on. Yeah, I I don't know I can't I don't I've seen a lot of players doing different like I, I've had this friend Lincoln Durham plays drums with his feet and plays guitar <laughs> and plays harmonica and sings all like at the same time and I'm like I, yeah. you know I, I can't even do one of those things and like he's doing all all of it <laughs> once so. yeah I know it's it's crazy yeah, yeah. well you uh, uh what's uh you mentioned um one of your guitars you, uh but do you um. You just bought a new one, right? A little bit ago. Yeah, not too long ago. Uh, I bought a new one. A new, uh, what, a Gibson, right? Um, uh, a Gip. Well, actually, yeah, technically, I got actually technically I got three within the la- the past year. Oh yeah. So yeah, last year or last summer, I got a uh, Gibson Les Paul, which I've always wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I finally got it. Got it on a really really good deal. And uh, earlier this year, like I'd say, probably around like March or April. I got an Ibanez Art Core, and that's more of like a jazzy type of guitar. And uh, I use it at school a lot where I'm doing a lot of jazz mm-hmm. stuff and you know stuff like that. And then my most recent guitar, I got a, uh, a Mitchell. I don't remember the model, but it is the brand name. It's a Mitchell guitar, and the thing's great. It reminds me of like like a PRS something like Carl, Carlos Santana plays but it's you know it's great it has a great tone Mm -hmm. and everything it feels great it's not super heavy do you get into a lot of that gear and stuff uh and different amps and all that stuff too and you know not as much as i should (laughs) you know um really all that stuff adds up too it gets quite expensive when when you get get too much into gear and (laughs) yeah when you're a college student (laughs) for music (laughs) yeah but um yeah you know i I have quite a bit of equipment, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want out there. Right. Hopefully I'll get eventually once I, you know, save up. Um, but right now, the equipment we have, I'm happy with. It's mm-hmm. working just fine. Yeah. I don't know anything really about any, any of this. Like, you know, I don't play it or anything. I'm just a big yeah. big fan. I, You know, I think it's all, all these guitars are beautiful and stuff. But yeah. like, like I said, when people start saying different, uh, you know, different things like I, I don't know it doesn't mean anything <laughs> to me but but i still appreciate it all but like i remember doing one of these podcasts in um in killer vintage over there and like seeing all these old guitars on the wall and just like you know amazed like it was like this is cool yeah. like just being in this room but yeah i know and then you hear stories about how they were telling me some stuff like about you know keith urban and peter frampton and you know all these guys coming to buy you amps and guitars there and yeah. stuff and i was like man that's cool like yeah i know uh, yeah i think like what like two or three years ago billy gibbons stopped in there to get something yeah and yeah i was close by and i did i saw it on facebook later i was like damn it yeah <laughs> but uh he's uh i love billy like he's just one of the like the way he can just tell a story like uh <laughs> and that with that voice and stuff actually oh, yeah. he's uh and he's coming to town too he's uh yeah, he is he's playing the pageant on the uh 18th mm-hmm. um but he uh i remember seeing him one night and um at uh i think it was a fam- family arena that night uh-huh. it was easy top and he was telling a story about that they had like the day off so they went to the zoo and <laughs> there was like uh you know he's like dad there's a it was a daddy ant eater and his mama ant eater <laughs> and now they got a baby ant eater <laughs> like, you know, just, like, <laughs> oh my gosh just the way you're like you know wow how can you make a story about a, a baby ant eater sound cool and like but he can do it and so yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> so, he can make anything sound cool yeah but <laughs> yeah. uh yeah man i um but like i said i'm uh, i'm really excited about this record i'm really uh excited for everybody to take a listen so come on out again uh the 20th join us and at Webster Groves at Highway 61. Uh, pick up a copy of the record. Uh, we'll have uh, physicals there. Digital's coming soon. You can get involved with all things Rattlesnake at uh, Matt Rattlesnake Lesh on Facebook mm-hmm. and uh, maybe an Instagram coming soon, he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People have really been bugging me about that, so I need to get on that. All right. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, but, yeah, I mean, keep an eye out. 
um, hopefully uh, Matt's coming to a town near you. <laughs> so yep. I uh, thank you so much for taking some time out, buddy. Oh, thanks for having me. And uh, I'll see you soon. All right, sounds good. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.